Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey! Yes, hello there everybody. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett. This is The Ramble. It goes on until uh, midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States of America. Uh, 7 o'clock out on the west coast. Uh, in China, I think it's the same time. It's only it's the morning instead. Anyway... Uh, we're here, uh, we're worldwide, and we want you to be part of the program. Later on, we will call upon our citizens panel. We may do it a little earlier tonight than usual, because I have nothing to really talk about, although I always say that, and then I go for about 15, 20 minutes, and I don't fucking shut up. Uh, anyway, um, let me see. Where do, I, where, do I, uh, where do I start? Boy, I... You know what happened? Last night I went to bed about 2.30 in the morning here. That's about average for me, 2, 2.30, sometimes 3. Uh, which means that if I get my eight hours sleep, I would wake up at 10.30. I woke up this morning at 11.38. I slept over nine hours. Why? Is this a, really the onset of old age? Am I going to be spending most of my time? Let me turn on the fan here so I get a little cool, coolness on my body. Uh, is this going to be a, a, a new thing with me? And, you know, first we got the pants, you know, right? Then we got the, we had the old man's cap. I'm not wearing that tonight. It's it's getting there, right? I'm just sleeping a lot. I slept a lot. I you know I have no idea why, but anyway. So I spent here. You know, you say Alex. You know, you have such an exciting life, and I suddenly realized I used to have an exciting life. Just like I used to be a big shot, I used to have an exciting life. I could tell you, hey, today, guess who I met, or guess who I had lunch with, or guess what I did, but I can't do that because I really don't, you know, all the people that I have known, who I work for and whatever, they never check in to say, hey, Alex, how you doing? You know, I have a few people in my life like that, um, but they're far and few between. So I don't, uh, I, I, I don't have, during the day, I don't do much of anything. I, uh, I watch uh, all the shows that I didn't watch the night before. Uh, like to, tonight, I'm going to watch uh, my Gotham, and I got Big Bang Theory, and I got Mom. This is a big night. Uh, and there's one other show. I can't remember what it was now. Oh, yeah, I, I watch Young Sheldon. You're watching that at all? It's not bad. It's kind of cute. Um, it's kind of lovable. It, it's really different than Big Bang Theory. But it has a kind of a, what does it remind me of? I don't know doesn't matter. But anyway, so what do I occupy my days with? Well, some days when I feel up to it, I do some work on the, on the site or on uh, uh, GabNet. And other days, I don't do a goddamn thing. Now, lately what I've been doing is we have a Roku channel. In fact, we have two Roku channels. We have Roku channel in the old flavor, which is done with a thing uh, called uh, uh, Developer SDK, uh, I think it has another name now, too, that they use, but it's, it's the one we use. Uh, and um, uh, that is GabNet Live is how, it, how you can find it. If you, if you have a Roku, just go in there. Just type in GabNet and GabNet Live and the other GabNet, which is GabNet TV, will show up. GabNet Live, you have uh, the, the uh, live programming all the time going through there. Uh, you have each of the shows from the night before on there. You also have Michael Snyder's movie reviews. Uh, we've got the arena, the sports show there. Um, uh, we've got a whole thing of old interviews that I've done over the years. And then there is a thing where we have, uh, uh, it's called Uncle Funny's Chuckle Hut. <laughs> and that's where I have comedians who are on my radio shows doing a lot of their stand-up. People like Drew Carey and... I don't know who I've, I haven't looked at it in a while. I can't tell you exactly who I got there. But we got, oh, there are about 30 different comedians doing comedy there. And then I've got uh, documentaries of my trips uh, to uh, various foreign lands. And then um, some old programs of ours. And it, so, you know, it's all there, right? 
most of everything. But then I started this Gabnet TV, and what this is, is this is a site using a newer uh, Roku format uh, that is, um, it's, 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 to begin with, it's ideal for 4K. If you've got 4K, until you start watching one of our videos, which were shot sometimes in lower than SD, uh, you can go over there and, and take a look at that, and we've got, um, we've got all, a bunch of shows that we did after I got fired at Sirius when we went over to the TV studio and did the thing as a TV show, which was a, really a big mistake on my part. Uh, it was a big mistake on my part, not because we didn't do a good show, because if you look at these shows, they're terrific. They're really good. I, I was very happy with them. But what we didn't think about was that when people watch TV, Okay, they're going to use up a lot of bandwidth, and we were doing this at uh, when were we doing it? We were doing it at ten o'clock in the morning, uh, and doing it at ten o'clock in the morning uh, is the middle of the day, so people had to watch it from you know their home or whatever. And if they didn't have some Wi-Fi today, it would be easier. Today you got a lot of Wi-Fi everywhere. Back then there was Wi-Fi, but you usually had to take it off your your data plan on your phone or whatever. It was just it was it was sucking up too much data. All right. So uh, what I should have done the day I left there is I should have come and started this, which was just audio, which is then changed into doing video because we can do video easier and you're not you're not using up a lot of bandwidth doing you know watching this on YouTube because you're at home. Uh, you got Wi-Fi. If you're out somewhere, there's some Wi-Fi where you're out now. Uh, so it, it's it's easier and better. Plus, if you don't want to watch the video and you don't want to suck up bandwidth, you can always just you know go over to our gabnet.net page, click on the upper uh, thing, and you'll just get the audio version of the show, which is the audio portion of what we do here. Uh, I'd like to think of this as a radio show that we just give a visual to. But what's happened lately is a lot of people are starting to just watch the video because they get over to gabnet.net. And then right now, if I go over to gabnet.net, oh, it better be happening too. Uh, there, it's just automatically showing the show over there. So when people go over there and they say, well, why should I click here for the 24-7 feed? Because there's no need to because you've got the video already. Uh, so um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, so I've been working on that. Uh, Gabnet TV site quite a bit, and the reason I've been working on it is because I uh, I I, I want to I'd like to do uh, you know to give it some some stuff some more stuff so I put some stuff up there. One of the things I put up and I put it up the other day, and I managed to get it and I I restored it to its original title and I think I told you about this story, but we did what was I think the worst television special ever done. Anywhere, just it, 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 I watch it and I say it is so bad that it's good. But it was just me completely out of my element, not knowing my strengths, and it was just horrible. And it was called Alex Bennett Wired Again. And I told the story about how Condi Nast, who owns Wired magazine, just two days before we were going to go on the air with it, said, "If you go on the air with it, we're going to sue you." Well, you know. This, it wasn't that we didn't have a lot of, the station didn't have a lot of money. It was owned by Chris Craft, the boat people. Uh, they could afford a prolonged litigation, but they didn't really feel like doing it because prolonged litigation costs money. And what, over a silly little one-hour show done by Alex Bennett, uh, which up until then, that time, because it hadn't broadcast, nobody knew sucked, okay? Uh, and uh, so we took, we, it was called Alex Bennett Wired Again. Now, we could have won the suit if we wanted to do it, but we didn't want to spend the money. Okay, so it's two days before. What do we do? Uh, do we go on the air with it as Alex Bennett wired again and feel these people are just like Donald Trump who yells he's going to sue somebody but never does? Or are we going to actually go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, change it? So what we did is we took Alex Bennett, said Alex Bennett, and then it said wired again, and we did a scribble where we just, like, we painted it out. You couldn't really read the word wired, but it was, so it was Alex Bennett again, and a little blurby there. Well, that, of course, pissed me off. I mean, I've, I've never bought another issue of Wired magazine in 
how many years was this? This was done in about 91, 92. I haven't bought a copy of Wired magazine since then. Didn't want to have anything to do with the motherfuckers. Uh, but uh, it has always griped me that that show didn't have its real title. Um, and it was based on the fact that I would say to people, you know, I, when I was younger, I was wired all the time, meaning I was getting high. And now that I'm a little bit older and we have technology, I'm wired again. Uh, and uh, that's where the title came from. We had no intention of having people mistake me for Wired Magazine. God forbid we should do that. Because their magazine fucking sucks. But anyway, that's my own personal gr grief with them. So I, um, I found a copy of it. And I it went to a great deal of work uh, dubbing it off because I've got something here where these older tapes that I have, which were VHS tapes, if I start trying to, to, to run them, they have little glitches in them. And every time they have a glitch, um, uh, it, it, it does something to the, to the uh, audio, okay? So that if enough of these glitches happen, by the time you get to the end of the tape, everything's out of sync. So I was having to start and stop and start and stop and then patch these things together. And somehow, for the mo uh, this wired again, I could restore. I absolutely restored it. And so I said, as long as I've gone to this much trouble to restore it, I wish I could have those original titles. Instead of having it say Alex Bennett blah, again, that it says Alex Bennett wired again. And a guy who was our director on the show, uh, Martin Higgins, uh, on YouTube uh, has videos of his spots that he did for the show, which were little 30-second spots. And at the end of the show is the an animation and it was Alex Bennett's wired uh, Alex Bennett wired again and I said well fuck wired now I'm gonna get even and I went back and I took I cut this out of his his video okay and I slid it into wherever that graphic was there so I have restored the show back to its original title so if you have Roku at least Go watch it for two reasons. Number one, I put a lot of work into it, into restoring it. And secondly, what I've restored is the worst television show you'll ever see. And I'm proud of that. I'm very proud of that. Because I've done some good things on TV. You know, I won a couple of Emmys. I did a, a, a foot race uh, coverage called the Beta Breakers. And I got an Emmy for that. And I got an Emmy, just a personal Emmy, for uh, best performance by a... Uh, by a person uh, on a TV show in New San Francisco uh, for these little things I did on a show called um, uh, Log On TV. Uh, and so uh, I have done good TV, but I, and I think I learned by that experience. Because there's one piece in the whole show where I'm taking you on a tour of San Francisco's marina, and I was having fun with people. And uh, I saw that as a real benefit. And so when I finally went to doing these things on Log On TV, I started going for my strengths. And I learned a lot about doing TV, uh, having done that. And uh, then I also had, but what I also had here, I have two specials that we did called Alex Bennett's Comedy Hour. And they're very good, by the way. I'm not ashamed of these at all. In fact, the fact that I'm having a hard time restoring them uh, pisses me off because I really would love to have you see them. Uh, and yet, the problem is the second show that we did, I put it in the machine and it won't even, the tape somehow is jammed in the cartridge and won't play. So I have to work that one out. But the other one also has a lot of these little glitches, right? Uh, that I found, and it makes it, 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 every time I record the damn thing, uh, by the end of the show, everybody's completely out of sync, and I can't get it back into sync again. You know, I, I don't know what the cure for that would be, all right? If anybody knows, write me, alex at gabnet.net, all right? I have no idea what caused that. So I can't, um, I, all day long, I must have watched this special two or three times, three, three, four times, uh, trying to f make a copy that I could put up at least, you know, of at least the first Alex Bennett comedy hour. The second one was great too, but the first one was really good. And uh, damn it, 
uh, I, I cannot get that. I spent all day trying to get that thing in sync, and I can't get it in sync. I was using different uh, pr programs to bring, the pr bring it in, three different programs, and all of them it goes out of sync. And it, it, it doesn't go out of sync when I'm watching it. It goes out of sync when I play it back. So I don't know what the problem is, and uh, I need bigger experts than myself. Here's what happened. Years ago, I had a really nice machines that I bought that were editing machines, video editing machines, professional machines. Like, they were 3000 bucks a piece. And they had time-based correctors in them. And this, this would take your signal that was in on your tape or whatever, and then it would go through the time-based correctors, and it would send out an absolutely smooth signal. Well, I had one of those machines here, but uh, so many years had gone by that we hadn't used it that it wasn't working anymore, and it wasn't worth repairing either. So I threw that out finally. It wasn't, you couldn't play a tape on it. Uh, there was some electronic glitch that went on. So uh, if I had had those, one of those machines, I probably could have, could have done this. I probably could have done even the bad one that wouldn't play. But, you know, so that, that's what my days are, you know. It's restoring my life so when I'm dead, there's a record of it, you know. And uh, but what I just found is a perfect tape that doesn't glitch and probably will play all the way through of one of the Alex Bennett Play TV shows. And, and, and unlike the one that I already have up on uh, uh, GabNet TV, um, this one is higher quality because it was done in SVHS, and uh, it's a show we did with Eddie Fisher, will you believe, okay? And uh, it's a good, clean copy, and it looks like I'm going to be able to at least put that one up in, in glorious, really gl glorious resolution. So, you know, uh, if you have a chance, if you have a, a Roku, and, you know, if, if you don't have a Roku, I would suggest getting one. They're only like, God, you, can, you know, you can get the Roku stick, okay? This is just a stick with, it, with an HD, what is it, a, uh, uh, just a USB is it USB? I'm trying to remember if it's USB or it's a or it's an HDMI, but it uh, it uh, you simply plug it into the back of your TV set, and you've got yourself a Roku. It does everything the big Rokus do, um, and um, or you can get yourself a and they're like thirty nine bucks, and then the regular Roku is something like seventy nine bucks, but I think they're really worth having. Uh, you can play, uh, you know, if you, you can put Netflix on there, you can put Amazon on there, you can put, uh, um, if you have HBO and you have Showtime and you have Stars, you can put those on there. And that's got all these apps for various things, like GabNet, okay? So I suggest that. So that's what I did all day. Is my life exciting or what, okay? And uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, Buddy is still staying here. He's out tonight. He said he might come by during the last uh, half of the show. That would be nice. Uh, but I, uh, so I, and I, I was going to go out and do something. I don't know. Just go, to, go down to the store, and I just couldn't get myself to get out. It was kind of a dreary-looking day outside. And, you know, I'm, my feeling about going out is this. Number one, if you don't use your body, it won't wear out. That's, that's theory number one. But theory number two is, you know, if it's a dreary day out there, why, why do we need to go out? I mean, I have so much room in this apartment. We're very lucky, you know, that we have this apartment. I mean, I'd be out all the time if I was in like a one-bedroom apartment somewhere. You'd have to get out of there because of cabin fever. But you never get cabin fever in this place. And in this office, I've got all the toys I need to play with and so on. So I, I just never find myself going out, and I, I really should. Uh, and, I, you know, I'll tell you, I... Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not going to, I'm not one to complain. You know, I've had a, I've had a great life. If I have to go back and look at it, you know, I, I have to say that I was in the radio business longer than most people are allowed to be in the radio business. Maybe, maybe I was in it longer than, uh, uh, long enough that a stupid person like me would stay in it, okay, rather than find myself something worthwhile to do. Um, you know, I've had a good career. I've had, uh, some great loves in my life. I've managed to wind up my life with uh, one of those loves who has been just terrific, and that's that's girlfriend. You know, so I'm I'm am if I were to if I were to be honest with you, I'm a fairly lucky person, not a fully lucky person. Uh, I sometimes 
you know, you, when you get older, you get to resent certain things, and and uh, they're not things you should resent. Um, I uh, but I re I resent I think what I consider to be the lack of recognition on certain levels. Okay, uh, one of which is every time I see some doofus uh, getting in, inducted into the uh, Radio Hall of Fame, I'm going, you know, I've had as important a career as those people have and why are they going in there and nobody's even thought about putting me up for the broadcasters hall of fame i've gotten to the point where i know i'm never going to wind up in it i wound up in the bay area radio hall of fame and i appreciate that and i appreciate them for that but uh i never got, i never got recognized uh, nationally because uh, uh, the people who got recognized nationally lately are people who were like syndicated and all of that. And I never got really got into syndication. And then when I had a long career here in New York, which my longest was with Sirius XM, I was behind kind of a, uh, a wall that, that uh, the rest of the world couldn't penetrate. I mean, even Sirius to this day is kind of like unavailable to everybody right? Whereas radio was available to everybody. So anyway, so I get a little bitter about that. And, and I was, um, yeah, I saw a thing last night, I was watching, uh, uh, and, and next week when I run an interview I did today with uh, Bubbles, we were talking about Hedy Lamar, uh, And I don't want to spoil it for you, but last night uh, they were doing a show called, or a couple of nights ago, a show called Timeless. It's on on Sunday. And I watched it. And uh, it was about Hedy. They go back to the 1941, and they meet up with Hedy Lamar. And uh, Hedy Lamar is a woman who invented something, which when we play this for you, I don't want to spoil it, uh, invented something. She was a movie star, the most gorgeous movie star you've ever seen. And she invented something without which you would not have your cell phone today. I'm serious. And because she didn't get recognized for it, and because she didn't renew the patent, she never got rich from it. Uh, a lot of people have, because every time you walk around with a cell phone, you're walking around with a patent or something that was patented that Hedy Lamar created. And so when I hear stories like that, and there are a lot of them, you know, there was, uh, what's his name, the guy with television, uh, Philo Farnsworth, Philo T. Farnsworth, who was the guy who really invented television, but for years... Nobody would believe him, and for years he couldn't prove his case in court, and finally he did, after years and years and years. And now he is, most people say, the guy who literally came up with the first workable use of television. He did in San Francisco, by the way. But um, he, was a, he was a Kansas farm boy, and he used to till the fields, and one day in tilling the fields, he realized he had made all these, you know, these rows, and he said, what if I could paint something like that across a phosphorus screen? That's how, that's how his idea for television started. But anyway, um, I went and looked at it, and I did some research. And f as far as we can see, I and another guy that I know uh, invented podcasting. Yes, invented podcasting. Uh and we did. We invented podcast, and I look back to see about podcasts and so on. And the the closest thing to a real podcast started to happen about, as you know it, they claim if you go online, happened in like uh, uh, what was it, uh, nineteen in uh, uh, what was it, two thousand one, something like that, uh, in uh, nineteen ninety eight, we were doing this thing where I would, I didn't have, I was out of work. And so I, I wanted to do some kind of show. So like I'm doing here, I went on and did a broadcast. But it was recorded because I couldn't do it live. It was very, it was very expensive to do it live in those days. And um, I couldn't do it live. So I recorded it and then I put it up on my site. And you could go to my site and you could download the file onto your machine if you wanted to and listen to it. Well, this guy, this other guy came along. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name. My mind is such a blank these days. I, ha I have his name here because I was dealing with him a few days ago on stuff. Um, and he said to me, he said, well, what if, if I, I, I've written you a program. It's called Auto Alex. You put it on your site. People can download the program. Then they can put it on their machine. And then every day it will look to see if there's a new show. 
And if, they see, if it sees there's a new show, it will automatically download it to their machine so that when they get home, they can listen to you. I said, sure. And we just thought of it as a goofy little add-on. Well, folks, what does that sound like to you? Okay? So uh, I kind of feel we were the Hedy Lamar of, of, uh, of podcasting. And yet no one has yet figured that one out. No one yet has. And I've, I've talked about it, you know. In fact, um, what is it? I think we have a thing somewhere that says podcasting since 1998 or 1997. Uh, or from the people who invented podcasting. I and this other guy invented podcasting. Okay, plain and simple. I've looked to see what's been done before that. There were some people who turned out shows that, you know, you could go listen to online. Uh, not many of them, uh, but nothing like we had. And as far as live TV over the Internet every day with shows, I think we pioneered that as well. And yet we never get recognition for any of that. And I guess I would I guess I want the rec I'd like the recognition. There's something about me that would like the recognition. Just because I think I, I helped give the world to give birth to something that the whole world does now, you know. And I'm sitting here pumping out this podcast, and I don't get the kind of uh, a viewership that somebody who's uh, doing makeup tips at 13 is getting. But I'm, I'm happy that I, I had the concept, and we were able to do it. So anyway, yeah. Fuck it. Anyway, hey, listen, I've, I've bent your ear enough. Let me turn on the uh, Skype lines here so that we can hear people talk to me and uh, use this wonderful uh, thing that we've created. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, um, you know, here we are. This is So this is the end. This is what it's come to, okay? Me howling in the middle of the night about how nobody recognizes my achievements. Um, you know. Mm. And maybe, maybe, maybe Laura Ingram can do a post saying she's tired, tired of hearing that leftist Alex Bennett bellyache about his career. You know, I don't know because you know when you're when you get this old and you've done as much as I've done over the years, you, you just like a little recognition for what you've done. I guess you know, uh, it's not going to matter in a few years. I'm going to be six feet under. I'm not going to be at room temperature any long. I'm going to hit room temperature rather. And, and, and uh, it won't matter at all, but it would, it would be nice if there was something that was lasting after I was gone. But I don't think there will be. And uh, I, I think that everybody uh, in their life uh, would like to have something they leave behind that people remember them for. That's why a lot of uh, kings and uh, uh, pharaohs and so on built huge edifices to themselves which still stand to this day because they knew you know you could uh, um, uh, 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 y y people would remember you through it and so eh, I guess I'm the same way anyway our lines are open and I'm sitting here babbling waiting for somebody to call and uh, nobody's oh there here comes here comes uh, Scott Boddicker and adding to that group is Ray Renati. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, well, we can, we can hardly see uh, Scott because Scott it's is in the dark. here, isn't it? Hey, yeah, it is really I'm dark. Light in my room. I don't know why that's so dark on the screen. Maybe you should go into your uh, thing or something. You can adjust the brightness or something of your camera. Uh, maybe. Let me, I, I can oh, try. Yeah. Go play with that. Now, it sounds to me like Ray Renati is outdoors. Again. I am. Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm in... I'm in Union Square. Yeah. Uh, I uh, okay. You're in, yeah. You're in Union Square. That's in yep. that's in San Francisco. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And uh, there, there we go. are. Uh, there's the wait a minute. Look, look, show them the St. Francis Hotel. That's where Fatty Arbuckle had his party, right? Is that the St. Francis? That's right. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's where Fer Fatty Arbuckle had his big party. That's right. And I also believe, oh no, the Palace Hotel was where one of our presidents died. Um, yeah, a yeah. long time ago. Yeah, but uh, uh, well, why don't you do why don't you do a widescreen thing for us there, so we get a little right. more of a. Oh, there we go. There we go. You get oh, yeah. we get a really nice perspective there. Look at that. Uh, 
Boy, Union Square, they've uh, they fixed it up, haven't they? They've done some work. Oh, time. yeah. They keep doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. And in the winter, they have an ice skating rink right over there. Really? In San yeah, Francisco, right over, they have an ice skating rink yeah. outdoors? Yeah. Why? Yeah, right, right there. Yeah. <laughs> really? During Christmas yeah. time, yeah. Hello to Bree, by the way, is calling us from Dubai. How are Indeed. you, Bree? Woo. Yes. Good morning, Alex. Hey, good, well, good morning. Is yeah, Absolutely. It is morning where you are. So here you've got in San Francisco, outdoors at Union Square, we've got Ray Renati, and in uh, yeah. B Dubai, we've got, uh, we've got Bree. So, you know. And then None we've got from Texas, we've got Scott Boddicker, and then Phil has shown up here. How are you, hey. Phil? It's nice to be Did, did I reach Prostates Anonymous? <laughs> I don't have one anymore. Oh wait a minute! Today, it's not anonymous. Though. That's wait a minute! Today problem. you went in to I wish get. Wish it was anonymous. You went to get your tube pulled out, right? Uh, get uh, yeah, the tube got pulled out today. It sounds like TMI for Ray. Ray Ray's protesting. <laughs> no, no, no. I I was actually listening to yesterday's show uh, on the drive up to the city, so I know yeah. all about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, other than, uh, you know, Alex has been saying that he doesn't get any recognition. And I, I thought that he should have a new tagline, uh, the radical f for all ages. No, I, no, I don't want that. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. No. I, I, I'm hearing uh, little no. kids screaming. That, that, that sucks. Yeah. Oh, you want me to turn it off? I can mute it. No, uh, no, no. no. Okay. You're, you're fine. But you're it's fine. just that that's what woke me up this morning. What, kids uh, screaming? neighbors have a baby. Oh, really? Oh. Son of a yeah, man. so pretty much every day. And we've just been joined by Ray. Same, same routine, 3.30, 5.30, We've just been uh, joined by Rob Alfano, who I almost just called Ray Alfano because we have Ray Renati on. <laughs> My brother. Huh? Hey, Alex, so you, you used to do those uh, video chats on AOL, too. Remember that? On AOL? Yeah, AOL Messenger. You did, like, a video thing. I don't. Wait. No. Uh, oh no! You used to chat through AOL, and then you would do it live on. Uh, uh, live yeah, I'd have people. Well, I'd have. I used to have people kind of somewhat chatting with me on radio. Oddly enough, is that CNET? What the hell was that? Huh? Was it CNET? No, this was on your own between jobs. I don't know. I did a lot of things between jobs. I always like yeah. to keep busy. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's the same reason I think that Rob, in spite of the fact that he's the furthest away he can get from broadcasting has his own studio at home and, and, and likes doing spots for us because it keeps your chops up, right? Yeah, it's, you know, I don't know. You can take the boy out of radio, but you can't take the radio out of the boy, I guess. Yeah, well, I've had it. Out had, of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I've had a home studio ever since I was a little kid. When I when tape recorders first came in, my uncle gave me yeah. a tape recorder. Yeah. It, was, it was actually, he gave me a reel of paper tape. It was made out of paper uh, and, and, and had surface noise you wouldn't believe. But then they went, and they, they went, to, t they went to plastic pretty fairly soon. And I would record on yeah. this. It was a brush sound mirror, and I would do pretend radio shows on it. So I've cool. always had a studio. Oh, what this... is going on in Union Square? Uh, there's just a bunch of little kids running around. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, Alex, my dad worked for Ampex. Uh, for a long time. Ampex? And, uh, yeah, and yep. he used to get all his free stuff, and he get, I had a, a, a really good reel-to-reel -reel I used to play around with, uh, record music on there, all kinds of were stuff. You ever, were you ever, did they, they ever regale you with the story of how Ampex came to be? Yes, you have. You uh, told I, us yeah. about uh, yeah, Bing Crosby, yeah. West Coast. Yeah. Well, he, he yeah. financed it, but the guy who came up yeah. with the tape recorder he didn't come up with it he was in more he was in world war ii he did a reconnaissance behind enemy lines to find out why hitler was giving speeches from places where he wasn't and they found these machines and the germans uh. had invented tape recording and so they took back a handful of these machines uh, back to the united states and the government took most possession of most of them he took another one of them took it up to redwood city and uh, what do they call it uh uh, 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 retro, what, what's the term they use when they take a piece engineer. of... Engineer. 
re reverse engineered re it. Reverse engineered. Yeah, reverse yeah. engineered it and created the first American tape recorder, and that was the Ampex Corporation, which no longer exists. Mm -hmm. All they do is maintain that they Want have a few change. employees to maintain their old equipment because a lot of sta uh, stations still use those old tape machines. Those so machines good. lasted forever. I mean, they were. Yeah, yeah, Lug they're it. still out there. They got like they got like five or six employees just to go fix them. Yeah, uh, and they still got the credit union, which I still have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Well, that's, yeah. that's all Bizarre. that matters. Um, so, well, good. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah. Hey Ray, you know, yeah. we've got people in Hawaii that shine their camera all around and show us whales. Yeah. You want to show us Union Square? He just sure, did. Sure, sure. Is there a way to turn it around? Let me see. Uh, uh, yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah, just. Button. There's oh, a, I see. I got it. There you go. Okay. And then uh, yeah, that. Uh -huh. yep. All right. Mm -hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Now you hey. see. There we are. It's uh, getting to be evening because the lights are on everywhere. Yeah, it's it's beautiful out here. It's warm. Yeah. There's the St. Uh, Fran Francis Hotel where Fatty Arbuckle's party was. Yeah. He wasn't there, by the way. He was in Hollywood. Uh, oh. He did not do what they were claiming he did, but Hearst loved the story so much. He, you want to talk about fake news? That. And listen, there's the cable cars you're listening to. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's right over there. I feel like Rice Aroni all of a sudden. I'm not sure why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rice Aroni. The San Francisco treat. There's Macy's. Y yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not the Macy's. That's, but that yeah. Macy's has been there since I think about 1950. Oh yeah. Uh, but the, but that's not the original Macy's. The original Macy's no. is here in New York. Uh, yeah. And it's. And they it, used to. Yeah. They used to have a Walgreens around the corner that was huge when I was a kid. Everyone went there and then they closed it. Wow. Is oh, it, well, look, wait, but we can even see them. Is that the moon we're looking at? Yes, that's the moon right there. Wow. Sounds like a, a Yogi Berra line. Everybody went there, but then they closed it. Why would they close it if everybody went there? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, they've been telling me that San Francisco has these really tall buildings now, but I don't see any oh. evidence there. Okay. Oh, it's too hard to... Okay, there's salesforce.com building, and you can't see it from here, but it is. It's It's blocked. Oh. Uh, I think it's right behind the St. Francis Hotel. No, oh, <laughs> really? Can't see, it's behind there. Yeah. You can't see it. It's <laughs> it's huge, wow. Alex. It's like you can't even yep. believe it. Well, we have uh, we, we have these new pencil-like buildings that are going up in New York. I saw that. That everybody hates. Yeah, they're ugly. Yeah, they got a anyway. Anyway. piece on the end. Wait, of them. What, what are you saying, Rob? I said they're harder to hit with airplanes. Are they really? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they make them so pencil thin. I see. You, you know something interesting? You look at the Empire State Building. I don't know if you've ever paid attention to it, but you notice how it's tiered as you go yeah. up? You know why it's tiered like that? Wind? No, they had to do it because the city made them do it because if they had simply a flat surface going all the way up, it would have cast a sh too big a shadow. Huh. So I this is... They changed that with the Twin Towers. Uh, and when the twin ta well, they didn't care what was going on downtown. And by wow. the way, when they put those those in, people thought those were the ugliest goddamn buildings they ever saw. Yeah. yeah. You know. I'm, by the way, my ear is getting infected from wearing these earphones every night. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Ah. Put on a pair of headphones for a while. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I could. Stuff you can use called ear gene. Ear gene. What's it called? E uh, and and what you do is you use a Q-tip. You, you take a little. You put you put it around your ear, and it keeps it uh, from rubbing. It also, mm. Some people also have issues with silicone because I do those uh, things, those hearing uh, yeah. protectors. Yeah. Uh, I learned about it from the audiologist and the and the lab. Yeah. The ear gene. I'll throw a bottle in. Uh, your computer. Uh, don't throw it in the computer. Uh, throw no, it uh, leave in, the, in box. the box with the computer. Yeah. By the way, when are you shipping that out? Uh, chances are. It's in the what? Chances are. It's tomorrow. Ah! Tomorrow. The police are coming after me. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I heard a video. Uh, you know, I, sure I can turn it off. <laughs> no, I gotta, I gotta go to, I gotta go to rehearsal anyway, so I should hang up. Oh yeah, today's the first day of rehearsal for your plays. No, yesterday was. Oh, yesterday? That's why I wasn't on. Oh, okay, what well, the, what theater? 
Uh, it's going to be at the Phoenix Theater, the ti- a small theater over in the in the uh, Native Sons of California building, around over on Mason and uh, O'Far- O'Farrell. Oh wow! Oh, okay, nice. All right. Yeah. Well, have a good uh, right. have a good rehearsal, and you know, whenever you want to, just call us using the phone remotely. You know. I will. I will. And ladies right. and gentlemen, the I fabulous Ray Renati coming to you live from San Francisco. Thank you, Ray. Let me uh, let me uh, get rid of him here so we can remove him from the group. There we go. Uh, hello, Kevin. How are you this evening? Good evening. Well, so, so what's the name of this ear stuff again? Ear gene. What? Uh, ear gene. I think I. Uh, hang on, I'll show you. No, what it no. Like. But what what does it do? Is it it? Uh, it uh, it makes the ear. It's sort of healthy, the skin, yeah. and it's uh, like I have it's just like raw inside from these. Yeah, yeah, this this earbuds. will help. Yeah, this will help. And if you use it prior to putting in the uh, the foamies or the uh, earpiece, yeah, uh, uh, it won't itch. Uh, it, it, okay, well, good. I just I need something to clear this up because it it, it was yeah. better throughout the day, and then it started bothering me now. And last night when I woke up. Woke up in the middle of the night just picking at it, and I woke up, and there was actually bleeding a little bit. It's really yeah, strange. Uh, I'm going to get a bottle. I'm going to stick it on top of yeah. the computer so I remember to and put it in the box. Yeah. Uh, All right. You know, the only reason I don't wear the big earphones is because, well, they, they just, you know, they look like I'm wearing earmuffs, you know, so. Uh, but uh, I could I could do that. That would be probably be better for me. Where did I put those At least earphones? until this goes away. Well, I, What? At least until this goes away. Yeah, well, I have a pair of earphones over there, but I also have another pair of earphones around here somewhere, but I don't know where they are. Oh, well. Yeah, I'll just keep this one in one ear here, and I can hear you guys fine. How's everything in Dubai, uh, Bree? Yeah, good. Well, that sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early in the morning here, Alex. I, I'm really surprised that I... Uh, you know, manage to call in because when you shift your daylight t- savings time, uh-huh. it makes it you know an hour earlier. Oh, you don't you don't have so daylight it's six savings to eight time. A.m. Do you ever on for me instead of seven to nine, which was more civil? Do you ever have daylight saving time there? No, no. Oh, really? Oh, okay. No, we don't do that stuff. Oh, so this is, that really screws you up, at least for us. Yeah. Because it's what time in the morning now? Uh, well. Uh, it is 6.47 a.m. on Friday, which is the start to the weekend. So it's kind of like a Saturday morning. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, I'm glad you're up. You know. Go back to sleep. I know, but yeah. <laughs> oh, there's the air gene. I don't have a choice anymore because the, the baby upstairs is pretty regular in terms of when uh, when she's uh now, yeah, but, screaming. but this is was. but wait a minute. This isn't this isn't in your apartment, right? Right, it's upstairs apartment. Oh, I see. But and the, it, it, the walls are that thin that you can hear the baby upstairs. No, I mean the walls are not that thin, but we have a maintenance shaft. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it kind of amplifies it going down, and my. I have two bedrooms that are facing the street uh-huh. and, and, uh, there's a, you know, there's like a mini Mart there. So, and, uh, a lot of traffic. So I sleep in, in, in a smaller inside bedroom, but the one problem with that is it, it it's attached to the maintenance shaft. No. So anybody who does anything in their kitchen or anything in their small room, I hear it. Yeah, and I think upstairs, I think they made the small room into the nursery. Oh, I think. Okay. Well, uh, hey, I so. never asked you this, Bree. Are you married? Yeah, I yeah. am. Oh, okay. Because you said you had two bedrooms. I figure people don't have two bedrooms if they're single. Usually, he has three. Oh no, actually, here, Alex, that's yeah. not true. Uh, it's very often the case. I have I have a uh, guy I know who's got a four bedroom villa, and it's just him. It's not based on need. It's just based on sort of happenstance and the contract you sign yeah. and what they have available at that time. Wow. Hey, uh, Tony's joined us this evening. Tony, what were, you, what were you putting around your shoulders? Are you cold? I have the window open because I'm upstairs by my mother's because she's driving me nuts tonight, actually. 
But I, I lose, it's like my little blanket I sleep with. Your actually. mother's <laughs> driving you nuts. You know, this is getting to sound more and more like Norman Bates every day. <laughs> Sometimes I think it might be, but she's harmless. But Alex, I don't want to hear about my aunt's problems. They have no problems. Who who doesn't have problems? Oh, my aunt's fighting with my uncle. He's cheap, Alex. The guy's cheap. And she says he's a cheap bastard. So my mother, oh, you got to By the way, let me, let me just say, say for people listening around the world, uh, yeah. This is the essence of New York. Yeah. Tony she's, and his mother's complaints <laughs> about her Barbara sister. Hates my uncle. Well, she's right, out. Huh? He's, my Aunt Barbara can't stand him because he's so <laughs> He's just Alex. You would vomit if you met the guy. I just love this. I just yeah. love this. So my mother's like, you got to hear what she's talking about. So I got at the thing that you have, Alex. I have, you know, the Alexa thing that you could, because my mother has a hard time dialing. So now she can just say, Alexa, call Aunt Barbara. And then the number comes. Oh, up. don't say that word, please. Oh, it goes off. Well, yeah, in his so. house. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, here, 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 let me Alexa. tell you, so I know somebody crazier than you are about Alexa, uh, uh, Bree. My friend Shecky. He got himself an Alexa. Oh, yeah. And yeah, he, he decided he really liked one. it. And then uh, he decided yes. to get he, he oh then a bank said if you spend five but get our credit card and spend five hundred dollars in the first month we'll send you a free Alexa and one of the dots. So oh, he, he did that. So now he's going to get two it. more. And then I he decided to get oh, an yeah. he decided to get an Echo Show. Oh, I love it. Oh, I, I have two of them. I have that Echo on sale now. I have the Echo Spot. Oh, you got the spot. How I love the nice spot. Place? I love yeah. it. I, I, you know, for years I've had a clock radio next to the bed, and this thing is so much nicer and better and does more things, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. it's, I've it's heard the price of the Apple things coming down. It better. When coming no, out. they're too late. I heard it's good, you know, the, and everything oh, else. Yeah. Like, no, no, what's good about it? Tell me what's good about it. Hey, I'm just uh, miming the, 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 the uh, I, Apple people. I, well, no, but what, what, <laughs> what's good about it is it has great sound, supposedly. But mono, mono, okay? You've got to buy two of those things to get stereo, and they're not yet set up so you can use two of them for stereo, and that would cost you $600, all uh -huh. right? It only uses Apple stuff, you know? It's not as wide-ranging as Alexa. Alexa is 79 bucks for crying out loud. Ugh. Well, Stop. I discovered that my Apple TV, as I was laying there and not able to get the stations that yeah. I get on the Roku, uh, all I had to do was press a little button on my phone, and I could watch stuff on TV that was on my phone. Yeah, of course. Uh, you never knew that? By the way, we I refer to her here as Lexi. Lexi, uh, I see. Uh, well, the reason Say I Lexi. the reason I have changed her to, to respond to the word echo is because I don't want to say Alexis a lot mm -hmm. because if somebody says Alex is you know, next thing you know she it's bad enough that every now and then my uh, spot in the bedroom responds to something that was said on television and it's almost like a a, woman, a lady with Alzheimer's you know. Yeah, <laughs> the other day I was in the middle of a sales call. I had customers on the phone. I'm in my office. Yeah. And I've got one of those Alexa, the one, the, I can't think of the name of it. You press the button, but you can also, I, I, I've disabled tap. that. The, not the tap. Oh, oh, yeah, tap. the tap. That's right. And, I'm, and all of a sudden, I was talking, and I'm doing my spiel. And all of a sudden, Alexa goes, brruh, brruh, brruh. and everybody went, what the hell was that? Really? This gave me like the raspberry. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the hell is that? Oh, my mother was calling it Alexis. Well, she, she was, she was uh, laughing. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is that, that with, with, with the thing, it, it, here's something on television. All of a sudden it'll go, well, I don't know if I can exactly respond to that, but it seems like that happened in 1975. What? <laughs> well, let me do the trivia. You know, I'm, and I'm going... I don't even know what the question could have possibly been. There was nothing on television that said Echo, you know. Yeah. I think it's cool, the invention, or I like it. Yeah, but, I mean, I'd put one in here, only, you know, uh, I, I would rather not have something go off on me like that. Is Alexa suing Trump yet? The, oh, Alex, did you see what he's doing, doing, this son of a bitch? What? Trump's a scumbag. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. T Tony, Tony. Yeah. This is news to me. Trump is a scumbag? 
Oh, sorry. How did you say that, Tony? Oh, I, I have to talk like this. Alex, he's mad. My brother told me this, and I was talking to Phil. Trump is mad, Phil, because he owns the Washington Post, Bezos, I believe. Bezos, And he, yeah. I found that he must, he doesn't like the articles that are being said about him. So now what does Trump do, Alex? He Twitters how bad Amazon is for companies, and they're a monopolistic company, and he might want to bring them up on yeah. charges of antitrust. This fucking guy's a shitbag. To begin with, to begin with, to begin with, to begin with, wait a minute, to begin with, what Trump said was was patently wrong. He was completely wrong. What? What about the sales taxes? Not being. Wait a uh, minute, I got news for you. I pay sales tax on everything. Sales taxes? Yes, so do I. When you Uh, order originally, yeah, we didn't. Alex, you order X Y Z through Amazon. And uh, there was no sales tax on it because it came from some third party. Well, because they're dealing with a third party and you got to deal with that third party. But so far as so, Amazon is concerned on anything sold directly by Amazon, they not, collect, they, they collect, they no, they pay, uh, they collect taxes from you and they pay the gov- the applicable taxes to all the right. states. So they, they uh, are, are but they do, they're but doing their part. Right. I just remember of Amazon. What, what, yeah. what do you say, Bree? Since they first started. I've been a, uh, a customer of Amazon literally yeah. from like the first day they started. Uh, I've I've got to be one of the first. Uh, too bad I wasn't one of the first stock owners. That would have been better. But uh, they you did pay taxes for the first no, several you years. Did. Right. You did. There was no tax on uh, internet. Uh, there was no tax due uh, by the seller on internet transactions for many years. But what happens is, if you buy something on the the internet and they didn't charge you the tax, you're supposed to pay the tax. You're supposed to pay it. Have you ever done it? Who has? How would you keep track of all that? But what you're talking about are the third-party sellers that they sometimes represent, and it's up to those third-party sellers to charge the tax, not not Amazon, because Amazon has no way of paying those taxes because they want to force them to, uh, I guess, through their agreement to uh, make them charge the tax and and no, but they're but they're not they're they're acting as a second as a third party. These people are third-party sellers and not Amazon. Amazon. Anything you buy from Amazon, all that that was a mistake. You know what the other big mistake was that he wrote? Yeah. That it's that it, they're getting they're getting their deliveries cheap from the post office. Oh yeah, did you hear? I that? heard that. Yeah, that was yeah, that was that was, that was patently wrong. Number one, number one, the post office, in order to get their business, had to like any of those other companies, UPS and FedEx, uh, bid for their business. And if they gave them the right price, they went, okay, we'll start shipping through you as well. Let me tell you now, I do not get a single piece of package delivered to me by the United States Post Office from Amazon. I do. You're probably going to get this computer. Anything. <laughs> anything, anything, anything that comes wait, in, wait, wait, hold on a second. First, Rob, then Jeff. Yes. Anything that comes in an envelope, like I just ordered uh, a bunch of coffee filters. Melita coffee filters, those will come in an envelope and they'll come via U.S. mail. And the thing that aggravates you about it is because we're so used to seeing it by the door. There have been days when I'm like, where the hell is it? Because I don't check my mail every right. day. Right. And it's in the mailbox. Well, I had so much trouble with the United States Post Office, I complained to Apple. And Apple said, well, it looks like you've complained a lot about this. So we're going to give you the option you can opt out of UP- USPS and we'll send it UPS or FedEx. And I said, fine. And since then, I've never gotten anything that I ordered. Uh, I think maybe one or two things that came directly into the mailbox because they were mailed through the, 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 the there are certain items they say they still have to mail through the post office. So which, which one of those services do you prefer? I prefer UPS. All right. Yeah. Uh, they also do what they call a po- post assist. They'll start it in UPS, and then it gets to the local post office, and ends up in the post right. office, and then comes to you. Well, my so my, local my local post office, my local post it, office is so fucked, Kevin. Oh, ours is screwed up yeah, too. Yeah, that terrible. that uh, I asked uh, to not have that happen. And what happens now is those small packages that can fit in my post office, but my post box do come by USPS, but any box bigger than that, it's in front of my door. You know, yes, Rob. Yeah. 
What what's the uh, the post office saying? Neither rain nor snow nor sleet nor what is it? How does that go? Anybody Neither rain remember? nor sleet nor snow uh, will have us okay. deliver it anyway. You know, well, I mean, I've uh, got a postman who, God forbid, you know, we have the mailboxes that you know the, the old fashioned ones that are out on the street. Yeah, so they, they they go to each house, right? Right. The other day, and any time you don't park your, if there's a vehicle parked in front of your house that's too close to your mailbox, they don't deliver the mail. Right. They'll do it in rain, snow, sleet, or anything, but they won't get out of their fucking <laughs> truck to put the mail in my mailbox. They just. They and, and my question is, why the hell did we put the why why the hell do we put the steering wheel on the other side of the car in those for those post office trucks? Because so they can get out on that side of the car to deliver the mail. No, that's the side uh, post boxes are on if yeah. you're on, you're yeah, on the Yeah, that's road. what I'm saying. Yeah. But they, will, they don't if, have to get out then. If, if it's three feet away, for the three feet that he could pull up to my curb, because my mailbox is really right next to my driveway, and there's never a car parked in the driveway or in front of the driveway, he'll go right by it because there's a car parked in front of the house too close so that he can't get close enough to the mailbox. So well, I had the I had the problem with the post office not delivering stuff and then sending me a message saying nobody nobody was there and I was here, I was here when they tried to deliver. Oh, yeah. it. they I didn't did even ring up. Time. Yeah, now, Amazon they leave the package, but they knock on the door a couple of times. Yeah, uh, boom, 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 boom. They leave the package even if I was standing at the door and opened it. The guy's gone by oh, the course, time. Of course, but, but, uh, but that's a courtesy. That's that's. Okay. But anyway, the point is, you know, the po and so far as uh, Amazon is hurting businesses, uh, it's because they have a business model that people have, uh, you know, have grabbed onto. It's not like they were being insidious and trying to close down mom and pop stores. You know, I don't see him arguing about the fact that a super supermarket put mom and pop grocery stores out of business. You know, this is just the natural oh, flow Walmart. of businesses and the, the change in business and the change in the in business model. Well, yes, Bree. You know, Alex. Well, uh, you know, oh, wait a minute. I, Jeff, wait a minute. Uh, let know. me say something, Bree. Can you hold on a second? Because I. Because yeah. I said Bree, I said sure. Jeff was going to be next, and then we'll go to uh, you. Okay? Yes, Jeff. Okay. Sure. Okay. We have a, a place called Ace Hardware Store, mm. and yeah, you can deliver stuff there. So it's a post office right there. Yeah. In the store, and if you want to deliver anything there, and I guess you could also have them uh, send stuff there. But. Yeah. Maybe yeah, there's got a store. UPS stores that do that in the U.S. Right. Postal Net and all those places that huh. that'll take those packages. But I always have very good success with them. Yeah. Uh, as far as delivering stuff here, uh, if if they have to drop it off for us, they bring it right by the house. Mm -hmm. They maybe just knock on the door and then leave. Yeah. And yeah. Just, yeah. You know. Okay, Bree. Okay. So, I, I mean, I understand. I love Amazon. I love its convenience. I love that I can I look up prices for things whenever I'm shopping somewhere. But at the same time, I also understand that it, it is possible for one business or one company to become too large or too big and, and such that it kind of becomes a monopoly. Right. In a they certain way, else out of business, and then they start raising their prices. Well, first of all, Phil, first of <clears> all, <throat> Phil, you're, you're you're talking about Amazon like they make all the products they sell. They don't. They are simply oh, a reseller. They're 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 a, they're a giant department store. They've started to. Yeah, my brother is complaining about that because they were his company was selling stuff to Amazon, and what they start doing is they look at the biggest sellers, and then they. They do knockoffs, what they call them. Uh, um, Amazon, Amazon Basics. Uh, Amazon Choice, yeah. Amazon, Amazon Basics. Basics. And they steal yeah. your design. Yep. And they cut you out. Yeah. And and uh, what they also do is they will go to some of them and they will they say, you we become part of you, you become part of us, or we don't distribute you. It's the same with what like the cable companies were doing, uh, like Comcast and well, I, you know, with yeah. MTV and things. I, th I think if they're doing anything that is, uh, 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 what can we call it, uh, not right, 
wrong, antitrust, that the government should probably hit them with it and say you can't do this sort of thing. But they haven't yet. Mm. That's caught. for a couple of reasons. Lobbyists, uh, and they own the post, and he's very good. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I look, look you yeah. can't argue that he didn't build a company that's very special. Okay? Uh, that, would be, that would fall under regulation, wouldn't it? Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, the, the, Trump doesn't see anything wrong with regulation, but uh, yeah. the, the, the <laughs> monopoly, you, monopolies are not good for this country. But, but, but no, but you, but you know, I'll tell you what happens. And, and this is, the, I, I've said, I said this before with Microsoft when they were going through all their troubles. That's you know, works, yeah. is that they what happens? Them. What happens is you're a company and you do something right. And you become a monopoly, and you don't know you're a monopoly when you finally become one because you still think you're still that little company that's trying to make it. And then all of a sudden you find yeah. that everybody's saying, oh, well, now you're a monopoly. Well, it's not like you set out to be a monopoly. You became one because whatever you had to sell was embraced by the public. And in the that's case good. of Amazon, hell, when I want a dollar battery or something, I order it through Amazon. Why go down to the store if I don't need it immediately? You know, but define a monopoly. To me, they're not a monopoly, Amazon. Well, I mean, they're not a monopoly in the, in the fact that they're not inhibiting other people from competing against them. Yeah, yes, they're they are. putting you out. But yes, they are. How, how are they doing that? Their power. And it's not just them. It's the same story that you hear from the... Home Depots and the Walmarts, they do the same thing. They care, you know, uh, the, the home, uh, Walmart does the same thing. They'll go to companies that they've been distributing their stuff for years, and they dictate. Like, I know a story about uh, my cousin used to uh, work for Lawn Boy, and they make high-end lawnmowers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what happens is Walmart, they're selling them. But then Walmart decides, you know what we want? We want a $200 Lawn Boy. And they go to Lawn Boy and they say, we want a $200 Lawn Boy. And Lawn Boy says, we're not making $200 Lawn Boys. That's not who we are. And they say, if you don't, we're going to throw all your brands out of the store. And that's a huge, huge thing. And we're going to get the Craftsman mower or we're going to get the Briggs and Stratton mower in here. So they do. They bully their ways in different ways. My question, that, is, that my question is, though, is, is Walmart a monopoly? Because there are so many other stores like Walmart out there doing business as well. They may be the most successful at it. But Walmart uh, made it through their distribution channel to their stores. Amazon has taken it a step further uh, and distributing directly to the consumer. So, uh, well, here's the question. Who is the competitor for Amazon? That's what I'm saying. Everybody. Everybody. There isn't one at the moment. It's, Everybody. Uh, yeah. every, every place you can buy anything you can buy on Amazon. But I'm saying online. Uh, well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something. I learned my lesson a while back when I bought a TV set, and I bought it on Amazon because it was a good price, an LG 3D. You know, it came here. I opened it up, and the screen was smashed. All right? Well, I called them up, and it came from one of the third-party sellers, by the way, who did tax me. They did add tax. They might have been in New York. No, they weren't. No? No, they just decided to charge the tax. But anyway, they immediately came and picked it up and took it back. What I did is I looked at Best Buy, and they were selling the same TV set, and I could have it delivered the next day. And I knew that it was going to come from down the street. And so I, I went through Best Buy, and they came in, and they installed it, which the, other, which the Amazon one didn't do. And they made sure it was all working, and they took the box away for me and, and the whole nine yards. And since then, on a lot of items, electronic, if they can meet the same price... I would rather go down to Best Buy and just get it now rather than waiting a couple of days. Yes, Bob? Yeah. A, a Walmart now is starting home delivery. Yeah. I've seen uh, ads where they're, even on TV, where they're saying they'll deliver to your home now. Right. Whole Foods, too. Well, Whole, Whole Foods is Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, now it is. Oh, yeah, he bought them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but but the th and the well, reason they, they bought, bought the reason they bought Whole Foods was so they could start delivering food to homes. I mean, 
You see, it's like well, you and they bought our they bought our online shop here in the UAE. It's called Souk. Souk is a is the name for like a shop or market yeah. bazaar. Yeah. And we had Souk.com. S O U Q. You can look it up. And, and now it's owned by Amazon. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, t- uh, t- Tony. <laughs> Well, here's a question on Amazon with the third-party sellers. I know some comic guys who sell books on Amazon. And if you think about it, Amazon, they tell me, I think, gets 10 or 12% of the sale, Alex. eBay gets like 9 or 10%. So really, it's giving people another avenue to sell stuff. So it isn't like, you know, he's got to get his cut. You know what I'm saying? And you have to be an Amazon member to and pay like a store fee to sell books. So if you really think about it, it's not hurting all the small people. It's actually helping some people. Well, it's giving if, – if you are a small manufacturer, it is allowing you a form of distribution yeah. internationally that you never had before. Bob. Uh, another rumor I heard, I don't know how true it is, but uh, the Toys R Us is going out of business. Yeah. And I've heard Amazon wants to buy the, oh, the, fact, yeah, the buildings. buildings to use for whole – Oh, yes, really? really? Yeah. Hey, Tony, yeah. what would happen if Amazon started getting into the classic comic business? And well, he's not. He's re- but he really is, though, because he's let, he wants you to sell on his side, because he doesn't care. If you sell a book for 1000 bucks, he gets 10%. So sell all you want. I'm getting my 10%. He don't care. He's already in it. Bezos doesn't care. I just but, want my 10%. Think of what this has done to small... Think of what this has done to small authors. You can now... Uh, e-publish using uh, Amazon as your sales point, and so people are selling books who normally couldn't even get a book contract. But you don't make any real money. You know, how much money are they making on those books? Well, it's whatever they want to charge for them. Not a lot. All they're going to charge... I have a couple books on there. Yeah. If if you charge, like, you know, two bucks, no, you're not going to make any money. But if you can get something going that's fairly popular, I think you could do okay with it. You know, all I'm saying is, is that for, you know, I, yes, I mean, we don't like, we, we always hate the company that's, that's brutish and terrible and so on. I don't think Amazon fits any of that. I think Facebook is far more egregious these days. Yeah, they would sell our shit out. Yeah, our private things. It was all shit out. I don't know, Alex, you remember the, the New York Times had an article about Amazon employees and how they were treated, especially during holiday seasons. No. Yeah, yeah there was a big expose. Hmm. This was like a, maybe a year ago. And uh, there were some pretty outrageous things that were, you know, say said in there. That, that's why I have a, I have, I mean, I've, I, I have everything Amazon. I was one of their first customers. I still, but I don't like to read those things. And, and I, I wonder that at a certain point that, you know, when you become the behemoth, uh, that you, you know, have certain, Practices that, I don't know, may not be good. Well, yeah, but these are practices that, as I said, you know, it was like with Microsoft. I think Microsoft was, had become a monopoly, but they didn't realize it, you know, because they they still remember when they were, you know, living, working out of a small building somewhere. And so to them, the company was never a monopoly, but there was a point at which they had responsibilities they never had before. They put their their programs, their proprietary programs, they put them in the operating system, and other people couldn't get their programs on in the uh, in the operating system. They couldn't so get it on in the operating system, but I, I think that 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 uh, that uh, Apple uh, rather Microsoft was not completely wrong in what they were doing. It's, it's their operating system. I got to put well, you on well, my desk. Well, wait a minute. That was what the monopoly was. Netscape. Well, was well, wait, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But, but the point is that Strange. that. that that they needed, they felt that the uh, uh, the uh, browser was going to be an extension of your uh, your your uh, machine. In other words, if you have a finder up there, you know, showing you a whole bunch of things, and you type in an email a, a web address, it will go to the web address in that finder. That's what they f- felt was the need for them to be able to have all in one under the roof. You could still have Netscape if you wanted yeah. it. You could still have any of those other doofus. Uh, was uh, Netscape that went after them? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, because he wasn't on the desktop. And yeah, they, and, yeah. But and, and where's Netscape out, now? They're out of business. 
And and where's well, where's Microsoft one, now? No, you don't use their Explorer anymore, but they're still doing pretty well. But it's, he, Alex, here's well, my beef with it. Say if Alex creates an operating good. system, right? You create the operating system. And then you, they come to you and say, you know what? you got to put my browser on your operating system. I'd be like, Alex, why are you going to do that? It's your OS. It's your creation. You're going to tell well, me. Well, it wasn't like, you know, it was, uh, and Bob's got his hand up. I'll go to him in a second. The, the fact was that, that nobody at Microsoft was saying you can't put Netscape <laughs> on your browse on your desktop and use that as your browser they just said that microsoft explorer is coming along with it because and it wasn't like they were selling microsoft explorer it free. And it's yeah. not like anybody was selling netscape felt they, was, they were all free they huh? felt there was yeah. fair advantage that's what they felt they felt they like wanted to be on that on desktop. i think wait a minute let rob let rob uh, talk netscape. hold on let rob talk yes rob that everybody was going to use i.e. because it's built into the OS, so why download Netscape or Mozilla or any of the other browsers at the time? So they felt they had an unfair advantage. Yeah. That's what they wanted. They, they, they didn't want it to be part of the OS. In fact, that's the reason why Microsoft had to stop putting Java engines. They used to automatically put Java. Yeah, right. They had to stop because that same situation. And so now you have to download it. Uh, uh, Bobby Berth. Basically, the best thing uh, Internet Explorer or Edge uh, is good for is downloading another operating system. That's right. <laughs> another, <laughs> that's what I think they get used the most for is you get your computer set up, you go on to Internet Explorer, and you get yourself a good browser. Well, right. Edge, when I got this PC or when this PC came and it was clean, okay, and the operating system was in it, it had Edge in it already. Is it good? Uh, no, I never use it. Uh, you know, because I immediately download uh, Chrome and use Chrome all the time. Well, you promise me so I got that. You know, they don't, they're not standardized HTML, that browser, and that's the problem with it. Well, the problem with all browsers is they're all different. I can tell you that as someone who produces a website. My website looks different on different formats, and I have to compromise in order to make them look similar on all of them. Right. You know, uh, I, on mine, if you go to uh, gabnet.net and you click on the thing that says click here to hear the 24-hour stream, on, on Chrome, it puts a little player up in the, up in the, top, of the uh, top of the screen, you know? And on another machine, it puts another page that takes up a whole bunch of space and others it doesn't even work okay uh, how come uh when i listen to your show live on my cell phone yeah i hear it about 30 seconds before i would hear it on the uh safari browser i have no idea i have no idea you know i the 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 uh, uh, amount of time it takes for the signal to get out sometimes i find i have two machines playing the show one is using Safari, and the other one is using Chrome. And I find the one using Safari, every now and then I have to refresh it because it, it starts lagging behind mm. the other one. It, it, it just happens to do with the browsers, you know. But they, I, I think for the good of the public, there should be more of a standardization of the browsers. There is. They just don't adhere to it. Yeah. They're Good. standardization. Because there's no reason. Like, one of the things is uh, uh, the reason I had to uh, to do things a certain way was so so that it would work on Safari. Because it wasn't working on Safari when I, when I set it up another way. I mean, uh, that shouldn't be. I should be able to program for one thing, and it should go across all the browsers. But uh, you know you've got you've got but you only got about four browsers out there. You got what? You got uh, five browsers maybe. You got Chrome. You've got Safari. You've got uh, what's what's uh, Fox. Opera, a Firefox, a Opera. Which Opera. Who, when's the last time any of you downloaded Opera? I, I use it all the time because it has built-in VPN. Oh really? Yeah, and I also use uh, another one called Puffin and uh, Dolphin. Called what? Uh, I use Puffin on my iPad because it, it can play, um, you know, Java Flash or whatever. Yeah. And then I use uh, Dolphin on one of my uh, mobile phones. It's quicker and it doesn't have as much junk on it. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, anyway, so, you know, all I'm saying is is that I think that uh, the, the, 
um, uh, it, it, uh, uh, our dear president griping about Amazon like it was it, it hit on a lot of things that weren't exactly true. You know, like everything else. Yes, yeah, like everything yeah, else. Exactly. You know, true. I mean, yeah. And if you're going to nail uh, yeah, somebody, selective hearing. What? Come on. No, it isn't selective hearing. hearing, Phil. I'm telling you now, they don't use the post office exclusively for delivery. No, you know, and the, and the post office are the you ones. Just, wait a minute. The said, post office said. are the ones that bid, put the bid price in, not uh, not Amazon. You said that he said that they're getting a better deal than the post office than others. That doesn't mean that, you know, if the post office... Uh, Can you name anybody the post office delivers for that gives them the volume of right. business that Amazon does? Right. Yeah. Like, okay. You if you're, if you, if you, if you, if, 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 if you, if you have, have a business and you have a frequent buyer, a person who has buys a lot of stuff from you, you're going to give them a bigger break than you're going to give somebody who comes in and just wants to buy one of something. The problem here is the post office, a government uh, entity, or are they private? If they're private, then you can negotiate. If they're the government, well, uh, they, hey, you know, everybody, but they all negotiate with the post office, uh, you know, with with Amazon. They say, you know, here's what we can give you. Here's here are the prices we can give you per package, uh, and and that's how they bid for the business. And it's Amazon as a business can say, well, look, we don't want to use the post office; too expensive for us. And okay. the Republicans not want free, open yeah. trade negotiations. You do. Uh, but you speak out of both sides of your mouth. You really speak, on. Phil. You do speak out of both sides of your mouth because yeah, he is absolutely every, right on this. That's like if Trump had a guest at his hotel, he would give him a better rate if they were there every week. If a convention comes to one of his hotels, he's going to give him a better rate than he's going to give you and me who just want to book in for the night. And then be sleeping in the fucking closet. It's a government entity. It's a private concern. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's no different than bulk mail. Huh? No different than bulk mail costs. You complain that the government can't do anything, but they, now the government does something right, and they negotiate, and they get business, and it's helping them. And they work it seven days a week, the post office. If they office. didn't have the Amazon business, if the no. post office right now didn't have that Amazon business, they'd be in a lot of financial trouble. Absolutely. They're always in financial no, trouble. No, they're not always in financial trouble. So either let them operate as an independent entity, or not. No, or but no, but you're being you're you, you're not seeing the full picture, Phil. You you're trying we, to we win an have, argument uh, here. You're not trying to play on the side of sanity and business. No, he just wants to stick up for Trump. Yeah. Right. Trump's mad because Bezos owns the Washington Post and he's giving negative articles about Trump. And Bezos, by the way, <laughs> Bezos happens to be a Republican. That's funny, and he hates Trump. I love it. We now, don't have we'll a mail see what's going system on. here. What were you Trump. saying, uh, Bree? Bree? We don't have a mail system uh, here. Everything here is... Uh, I, I can hear like a woman in the background yeah. talking. Do you hear that? Is there somebody talking in the background I, in one of your I'm homes? In the back of the house, though. It sounds like a woman in a kitchen or something. Oh, I bet it's Scott. Because Scott isn't in the picture right now, so maybe he's over in the next room talking to somebody. I'll be getting ah, okay. pulled out to that woman. Yeah. So anyway, all of ours is, um, we have a company that's called Aramax, and it's kind of like a, it's like a local version of FedEx, but it's, they're like a courier system yeah. throughout the country. So if you want to send something, you have to take it through them. Yeah. There's no mail. It's funny, people always ask, you know, where do you live? And it's like, well, we don't have street addresses, so we don't have mail delivery like that. So, hmm. you know, if you hear about when you talk about street addresses where they assign a name or some sort of uh, 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 several letters or uh, an numbers, accent, yeah, and and then uh, yeah, we have it's called Makani. Yeah. So I can tell you, I can give you my Makani number for my building, and then that's how you can find it with the Makani app. Hmm. Yeah, we're getting something here, you know, where it's like uh, uh, Velvet Rose, and that's able to take uh, people directly to your house. Uh, have hmm. you ever heard of that? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I haven't heard hey, of that. Scott, turn off your audio. Can you <laughs> hear us, Scott? Uh, no, nah, they, they, he, he can't hear you. They're probably fighting in the kitchen. I think he wears headphones. <laughs> I only have like a little. You're out of here, Scott. 
Should I hang yeah. up on she it? She said she only has a little something. No, that's what Scott has. He has no pizza. <laughs> <laughs> she has no idea she's on the air. I can't find it. Well, like what is she saying? Well, I don't know. I have no idea. This is like one of those, uh, when, when you used to have a party line on the like phone, yeah. you'd pick it up. Oh, yeah. I used to, you'd hear I was, somebody else's conversation. Well, that, that, in the old days, it, it, phones were such that uh, you had to pay extra if you wanted a private line. Oh, so yeah. if you wanted to just get a phone, yeah. you were on a party line, and you'd pick up the phone, and there are two people talking. And you'd have to wait and hang up and then wait a yeah. bit and come I've back and see if you got that. a dial tone. When I was a kid, we got a second phone number, and the second phone number was a party line. That it lasted about two weeks. But does, uh, does anybody <laughs> remember this though? That when they when I was when I was maybe a teenager, or maybe even later than that, uh, there yeah. were certain numbers you could call, and somehow everybody got onto that same line, and you yeah, were all kind yeah. of shouting at each other. I think you could call time. You know, like five 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 one two one two or something. Yeah, and uh, you can hear other people. By the way, does that work I anymore? No, I, they they stopped it. Uh, you know, so you you, you know, some other ten year old and uh, yeah. you know. You got me on the other end. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Time. Yeah. Hey, Alex. Yes, Bree. Well, I will, I will confess to something. When when I was uh, an undergraduate. Uh, and I used to work at the campus radio station. And when the secretary would go, we figured out that we got this new phone system. Mm -hmm. And you could call different people and, you know, hook them up on the same line. So what we would do is we would we would call different campus numbers and like a pizza store. <laughs> and we put them on at the same time. So somebody would say, hello, Donis, hello. And the other person would say, hello. And then they'd say, well, what pizza do you want? Why, why do I want a pizza? <laughs> and we would do this to like every business and every, every person. And you get some very fun, in, funny interactions yeah. when people don't know they, that they didn't call each other. Oh, you so know? Scott's back, by the way. Scott, whenever, you, whenever you go away from your machine, put it on mute because we could hear the conversations going on oh, in the background. I didn't think we were talking that loud. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she has a small something. We know you have a little thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounded like she was saying. It's okay, Scott. It's, it's all right, Scott. It's okay. <laughs> there are plenty of people that have little things. Oh, I feel At least it's all there. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my floats freely now. Yeah. So, so wait, 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 Phil. Let me just get this. We never got the, the whole story. So it's been removed. Yes. And, and uh, turns out, I uh, it was a good thing I got it removed because that what they thought my Gleason reading was for the cancer, yeah, which was a uh, three plus three. Yeah. Turns out it was a three plus four, which is uh, exponentially higher. Yeah. And three plus three. So I got to go get all that stuff done. Yeah. So oh. did they uh, did they uh, give you a clean bill of health? Uh, so far, I have to get a PSA done in six weeks to make sure it's zero. Yeah. And oh. then if it isn't, they're going to shoot me with a little bit of radiation to kill any of the micro. Uh, yeah. Cancer. But did they have any problem with those lymph nodes they removed? No. Mm -hmm. no. They said something about uh, and I don't understand it all, but the markers were clear. Okay, so, so it looks like you're out of the woods, really, yeah. for the most yeah. part. Yeah, although uh, my continence issues and uh, 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 function uh, is 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 going to take a while to. Uh, uh, are you are you uh, are you are you wearing Depends? Yes. Okay. And and, and it's very good that I am. <laughs> you know the leaking. Huh? You don't realize that you're peeing. You mean? Yeah. Uh, you That's cough, tough. you uh, you laugh, uh, you know, all of a sudden. Uh, so oh. since uh, noon, this is my third or fourth pair. Wow. wow. But it gets better. But yeah, but that, that's going to be a major expense for you. Is it tax deductible? Uh, no. Oh, let's see. Okay. Is yeah. it? Already but Amazon delivers. Yeah, Amazon. Amazon delivers, though. You're very lucky. So you can just tell them to keep sending you about 20 pair yeah, every let's three days. Let's all tell Phil the, the task button. Are those covered by insurance now? Uh, not to my knowledge. It should. Uh -huh. I mean, it's a medical thing. You need it. Yeah, but you know what? It's like if your doctor takes you to go home, to go home and take two aspirin. You know, 
mm-hmm. the, the, you can't take off the aspirin, even though it is being used for your medical thing. Yeah, you it's, it's, it's generic. Be, you know? the, the, the amount of medical expense has to be much uh, a greater percentage of your income yeah, before it's tax deductible. It has to be greater than 10% of your income. No, I don't even mean tax deductible. I mean, isn't it covered by your medical insurance, the purchase of those adult Uh, Mine is. Really? That's one thing they'll give me plenty of. What, depends? Yeah, you would think. No, like Panadol or aspirin or, Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is they gave me Cytophil, which is generic Viagra. (laughs) You laugh, but what they want to do is they want to get... More blood. Side of it. Is a side of it. I forget the actual name. <laughs> well, the, it's, uh, but no, it's 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 the generic Viagra because Viagra right. went generic uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. Well, I, I gotta. So what they say is, you know, for the uh, uh, to get more blood to the penis area, uh, mm-hmm. you know, because of what I've been through, they they want to funnel more blood there. So they tell you to take a 20 milligram, uh, whatever it's Side called, Side yeah. generic Viagra <laughs> daily. Now, uh, so they gave me a month's supply today. It was $5. Wow. And, and I remember paying, I don't know, $400 for. Yeah, 20... well, to begin with, this is the generic. Yeah. What's yeah. the difference? It's supposed to be the same. Uh, it's the same. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, Viagra probably, the people who make Viagra will probably come out with another version of the drug. And all they have to do is change like one molecule in it and they get their, you know, thing back. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I do know that, for instance, Cialis is very expensive. I had to get a, a you know, a what do you call it? A, a, uh, uh, special, it, yeah. Yeah, whatever you have to get your yeah, the doctor to write or call, write them and say, here's why you need it. But it was uh, it, they were going to charge me. You ready for three months worth fifteen hundred dollars? Right. And right. now for three months it's one hundred and twenty five, and it's still. But that's still the most expensive drug I'm using. All the rest yeah. are amazingly cheap. My, mm-hmm. you know. Well, it, uh, yes, but uh, yes, uh, Jeff. I'm paying about seventy dollars. Yeah, I'm paying, I'm paying about forty-one dollars a month for it now, you know, yeah. for the Cialis and for the Rovastatin, which I was paying thirty-five for. I'm paying something like I don't know, ten dollars, fifteen dollars a month. Now, Mar- Marjorie was saying that she was concerned that she couldn't get certain drugs that oh, she had. Well, to no, it on. turned out it's not a problem. Oh, that's it, great. It, it's her pain medication, but she has a pain doctor. And he didn't have to ask for special conditions or anything because there's a generic of the pain dr- uh, drug that she's using, yeah. which is, um, um, uh, forget what it's called now. I took it when I was in the hospital. Uh, Heroin? Oh, uh, Dilaudid. Dilaudin. And uh, it's generic Dilaudin. And uh, I went down to pick it up for her the other day. You know how much it cost her for three months' supply? No. Five dollars. Five dollars. Right. We have this. I don't know how they do it. This ex- you, you you had it right, Rob. This express uh, script. Express. Sure. And I, you know, I'm paying one third of what I was paying in drug costs. Now, I mean, that's that's a substantial savings. I'm saving about f- every three months about four hundred dollars. Hey, Phil, are you back to the office? Uh, I went in for about two hours today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I good. Just see what was waiting for me. It wasn't so bad. I mean, they yeah. they actually did a good job. You know, it's amazing with this whole prostate thing, though. That they're 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 so. It's kind of like they're so iffy about everything. You know, they don't know if it's going to do this to you, if it's not going to do that to you, and whatever. And you and you wonder why, because you know you would think by now they've got it down to a science and they know exactly what's going to happen. And they know exactly what to do so you won't be incontinent. Blah, 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 you know, and yet they don't have to get your prostate removed. Don't do it. <laughs> you know, that trust, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, if I didn't have the uh, answer, I would have just had them do a, ter- a terp on me. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So uh, a terp is where they I need advice. What? You need- I need advice from you guys. Well, what, oh, what about me? Well, I'm I'm I've been getting up a lot more at night, and I so I think I'm at the 
the beginning stages what so where do i guess i go to a urologist and i have to get yeah it, yeah what you've got what you've got probably is a very simple thing and it, it's it's uh, it's an enlarged prostate period you know as you get older mm -hmm. it gets larger it squeezes down on the urethra less the flow fluid leaves yeah. the bladder so they give you a bunch of they give you a couple of drugs once is usually one is usually finasteride and the other one i take is cialis because it gives you a boner too, but it does the same thing as Flomax does, which is loosen the well, the prostate. <clears throat> and I I pee like a racehorse, you know. Okay. Not, not going to have yeah, to worry about. Uh, well, uh, well, the, well, uh, well the let Bree finish his question. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, Bree, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, a couple of years, I guess f four or five years ago in Singapore, they told me that I was going to have this problem, and they put me on something that was supposed to make me go faster, but it had terrible side effects. I was very mean was and it, Was it called Flow so Max? Was it called Flow was it, was it called Flow Max? You know, it began it began with an H. Hmm. Uh, I Heroin. might still have some of it. Yeah. What? Heroin. Anyway. <laughs> no, it made it made me really uh fidgety, agitated and mean and so i just for the last well, couple of years i just stopped taking it, it, it. it's mm -hmm. funny the flow max caused some problems with me and but the uh, cialis doesn't huh retro uh, retrograde ejaculation so uh, you get it's like a female hormone you get uh, breasts uh from uh, uh, uh from the well um, that's from the finasteride finasteride yeah yeah uh, uh. I, I would do brie if i were you uh and i wanted some relief uh, I would get the Cialis, which did yeah. provide me with relief during the... Uh, it didn't work for me. I tried the Cialis. It didn't work. Really? Yeah. But so so when I go there, do I get a PSA test? Is that the... Yeah. yeah. That's one of the things. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll uh, how, old are, how old are you, Bree? I'll have to get that done. How old are you? Old enough to know better, young enough still to try. No, no but how old right are you? Right at that age when he it's like starting to... Are you, over, are you over 50? <laughs> Let me ask you that. No. I'm then, then probably 15. you're not you're not ready unless you've had prostate cancer in your family. You, you about yeah, fifty yeah. is where you should you, start you having could PSAs. Also, you could also have a prostate infection, yeah. and that may be uh, oh. is some sort of. Uh, now they can look at your you do blood tests. Let's not be a doctor here. Let's not be okay. a doctor right. here. Just go I, see you know, a, a, go ooh, see a urologist. You're we'll uncomfortable, go, and we'll get, and they'll I'll take care it, of it. Uh, the only thing ter terrible about going to a urologist is that he's a urologist, and I've yet to find one I like. You know, mm -hmm. they they all are yeah. a weird bunch well, of people. <clears throat> if have you know, found that to be the case, you know, Jeff? Or, no, you have you have a good urologist, it. do you? I got a good urologist. Really? My urologist is female. At least her fingers are narrow. <laughs> I had a urologist once when he, sho he shoved his finger up my ass he said to me uh, damn these short fingers and I went gee how do you become a urologist if you've got short fingers look who's here Buddy Love showed up hello, hello, Buddy hello. walks in just as you're talking about a finger up your ass <laughs> yeah yeah anyway, anyway um, um, he, and he went oh these damn short fingers and I say you know that's not a good thing. How can you be a urologist and have short fingers? You know, you, you, people are going to make fun of you at the urologist convention. Yeah. Imagine they could pay yeah. But he, <laughs> he never could quite get it up enough in there. And I went, oh. I guess Trump won't be a Trump would be a terrible, uh, Trump would be a terrible uh, urologist. urologist. Imagine and, he says you got a loser here. Or a proctologist. Yeah. Yeah. Get a little closer Actually, to Mike. Probably, if you're to talk. He'd probably be better as a the proctologist. Alex. Yeah. Well, he's, he's certainly he, sticking his finger up our ass. Yeah. Well, you know, want, uh, one of my favorite Alex lines. To, yeah, you grab the earphones or something. Here what's going how on. he gets people oh, from all over. We've got somebody oh, from yeah, Dubai yeah, tonight on, on the uh, Yeah, we, he, wanted, he wanted us to tell you how we have, it, like, for instance, see the guy over there, the still picture. He's in yes. Dubai right now. Well, how about that? Yeah, and uh, nice to see you. Everybody from different places tonight. Uh -huh. Last I, a couple of nights ago, everybody was almost from the San Francisco Bay Area. You know, yeah. look at this. We got a good crowd. Yeah, you got a good crowd. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I'm glad to be with you well, once again. Alex, do you ever listen to watch Laura Ingram? And now here's the story of the day. Yes, Laura uh, Ingram. Yeah, she she uh, laid a big. Um, uh, she did a big boo boo. Oof. Mm -hmm. What did she do? 
Oh, oh you didn't hear Phil? No, Phil's oh, no. too busy watching Fox News, no, but, FAUX oh, News. Oh, yeah, Fox <laughs> News would not do this story because it affected Fox News. Uh, they, she yeah. lost five sponsors today. <gasps> Five and the number sponsors. keeps growing. What yep. she did she, is she oh, wrote a, uh, a, 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 to begin with, this one kid, I'm trying to remember his name. One of David the, Hogg. What, what's his name again? David Hogg. David Hogg. Hogg. So, yeah. David Hogg. He uh, went on uh, TMZ. I saw the thing. And it was just they, they heard about this, so they called him. And he said, oh, yeah, it's true that he was turned down by uh, the California college system, the University of California, UCLA, and so on. He's a 4.1. And he's a 4.1, which is pretty good. How do you Great. get that? Yeah, well. How do you get a A plus. Or? A plus in all your subjects. I the only way. A B courses. Four or five. How do you get turned down if you're a four or a 4.1? Yeah, well, they do. But anyway, saying. anyway, he wasn't griping about it. He wasn't moaning about it. He he got a call from TMZ. They asked him. He said, "Yeah, but you know," he said, "I've got a, I've got enough of a time trying to go out and save the world like I'm doing, and uh, I I you know I I it's not an, I don't have to worry about that sort of thing. I'll find a school somewhere." She then puts the thing out going, "I heard him belly aching or whatever about not being able to get into colleges." And everybody went crazy. They yeah. went ballistic. Because everybody that, from both sides of the aisle, not just the yeah. liberals. And so Hogg, who very rarely re re replies to these things, said, here's a list of Laura Ingram's sponsors. Do what you will. And within the day, five of five them of dropped, them dropped off out. Of, out of her show. Big, big and, sponsors. Way fair. And so she went back online in an uncharacteristic move for Laura Ingram and apologized profusely. Ooh. Yeah. But there is something too a little too late, you know, but there is something about that. If you're going to hire Laura Ingram, this is who she is. Yeah. Well, and that, that, I, to, I, I, that, absolutely. That's what I was it's, thinking it's, today. TripAdvisor, Nestle, Wayfair, Hulu uh, are, are some of the advertisers. Yeah. Five of them. Yeah. Um, but everything I, in this business has to do with timing. It, you know, yeah. to a large extent. Well, also remember, advertisers are very timid. But I, I do agree with what was said by Rob, and it was something I thought today, is that I'm going to have to err on the side of Laura Ingram on this one, only because she is hired to be controversial. Now go take a bath. Huh? <laughs> now go take a bath. Yeah. You to err on the side of Laura Ingram, you need a bath. Yes, right. I yeah. feel I feel Take a I, shower. I feel sullied, but you know, uh, nevertheless, I I think you feel the same way, Rob. That you know, you hired this woman to be controversial, you know who you got. and when she is, you go, you get chicken shit. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're creating a situation in which people, in order to keep their jobs, are going to go out of their way to be controversial, and sometimes they're going to have a misstep. Yeah, and that's like what Mel Carmazin did with Howard Stern. He exactly. stood behind him. Yeah. He stood by him, in spite of the fact the FCC was talking about drug, taking licenses and doing this right. and doing that, and he just threw every legal thing he could at the FCC and said, fuck you. You know, right. this is my talent. I hired him to do a job. He's doing it, and uh, you can, you know, you can blow me, basically. And, uh, but, yeah. uh, so for, for Fox to suddenly become chicken shit when somebody who they bought, hired, who was supposed to be hired as a loose cannon, became one, you know, is one. I mean, she she was wrong. She was wrong to do what she did, but nevertheless, you know, Fox is not what they were uh, when they were under the Ailes uh, leadership. Yeah, now that so uh, they're a propaganda you know, well, machine for Trump, Trump. They, 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 get, they are a propaganda machine though. for Trump. That's all they are. If right. that's what you're watching, you're not getting well, one one getting hundredth weaker, of the story. And, they're getting weaker and weaker because he's hiring all of their on-air personalities for cabinet. <laughs> Yeah. Sure. What do you mean all they're on the air people for cabinet positions? Who has gotten a cabinet Bolton. position? The only one that I know of Bolton. is Kudlow, and he's over at NBC. And Bolton. Bolton. Bolton's not a cabinet. Bolton's, Bolton was a, is a, he was White a Fox House guy. Jobs. What? A White House uh, jobs. No, 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 but I'm what? saying the Bolt, Bolton, you mean the former... Uh, uh, he, he was just he was just a commentator for Fox. He wasn't really a Fox personality or no. anything. But he, yeah. he was a Fox Daniel, talking head. Uh, yeah. Huh? Kudlow is he was he a commentator? Well, or, he had his own show uh, for years. Yeah. Okay. 
We see, I don't watch that much Fox. Thank well, God. well, he wasn't on Fox. Cudlow was on in, um, on uh, CNBC. Oh, I don't watch that. Yeah. You know, so, so uh, wrong. Everybody have a drink. Uh, <laughs> but this is new. Uh, yeah, Phil was wrong again. Yeah, hey, I'll do you it. Know, all I know is uh, if he gets his news from those guys, there are fewer and fewer of them left. You got Hannity and a number of other people that are still left. But, uh, uh, you know, what's his name? The Irish Chris, guy. He's got Chris Wallace. Yeah. Uh, no, He's still on. Uh, Chris Wallace is still O'Reilly. There. O'Reilly. Oh, yeah. O'Reilly. O'Reilly's gone. Yeah. Um, and. You know, Tucker yeah, you know, Carlson's heard, uh, still there. Suck Tucker Carlson's yeah, still, he's there. still there. Yeah. Now, does everybody I remember when I used to be a regular on Tucker Carlson's show? Bill O'Reilly again. Huh? I was watching uh, on YouTube. I watched Larry King was interviewing Bill Maher. And Bill Maher said that he was going to do uh, another debate, I think, with Bill, Ryle, Bill O'Reilly coming up. And I thought, you know, it's a little strange. Uh, because Bill O'Reilly doesn't really have a platform anymore, yeah. uh, you know, in a, in a major way. So Bill Maher is kind of, I think, being nice to him to, you know, debate him. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Give him that. that he's, he's in turn giving him a platform. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a hand has been raised uh, uh, by uh, 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 Bob Eberth. Bob, what do you mean, if he? gets his news from Fox. The other day, they started saying, well, we could pay for the wall out of the military's budget by declaring an emergency and saying that all these terrible Mexicans can get here because there's nothing to stop them. So what does Trump do? He starts talking about paying for the wall. Oh, no, he watches the- Fox and Friends in the morning and then simply parrots what they've said. Yeah. Well, how do you feel, uh, Phil? Phil, how do you feel about that? Come on, you know you can't be happy with this. Because I don't know that that's true. You that can't be true you, because you're not a you're not a moron, and Trump Are is. You, you know how how does a non moron stand up for a moron? Is what I want to know. Because I'm happy with everything he's done. Plus the fact, if you look at his approval rating amongst uh, uh, Republicans, it's in the high 70s or the mid 70s. Yeah, but there uh, are less Republicans now than there were before he went into office. So, well, yeah. one in five don't like him, but four and five look, do. Look, it doesn't matter if his base is still there. I said this last night because his base isn't what's going to get anybody elected. Okay, yeah. his base. No it, it was the it was the the middle grounders, the people who were vacillating between both sides, uh, who made their decision for Trump that got him over the top. He, I don't know if he's going to get that again. Well, no, he won't. He, he, I don't think he's going to run again. I think the only reason he declared that he was going to run was so that he wouldn't be a uh, they, all those guys uh, at uh, you know that are at the end of their uh, candidacy. Lame and, duck. Lame, lame duck. duck. Yeah. yeah, he didn't want to be a lame duck after the first year. And, well, uh, in his case, in his case, because of his taste in furniture, let's say a lame duck. Yeah. <laughs> lame, lame yeah. lame. Yeah. Uh, who's Savannah Guthrie? Savannah Guthrie is uh, the host of the Today Show. Yeah. Yes, she. Uh, uh, she sw- sorry for swearing. Yes, uh, I, I heard it. She said shit. Oh, yeah. 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 I love this country. You know, it goes. It, it, how do you feel about this, Scott? You haven't talked tonight about the fact that Anna Guthrie says shit and everybody gets apoplectic. Yeah. Yeah. I do it every day. What do you what what do you say, Scott? I like it. I like that. She said shit. Yeah, yeah. I do, too. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, what? if that happened anywhere else in the, in Europe, for instance, they wouldn't even care, yeah. you know. But but how did it happen? What what was yeah. it? She, she didn't know she was on the air or something, and she was oh, looking at her papers, and the camera was on, and she said shit. Oh okay. You know, I mean, you should know never to use four letter words in the studio. I never use them in a the studio. The minute I left, I'd curse like a sailor. But yes, Bob. And they're all upset about these uh, high school kids because some of them have used wordy dirties. Oh really? Oh. Mark, on the air? Yeah, the, the Florida students? Yeah. Well, who is your favorite Florida student? Do you have one? No, I haven't followed it too closely. 
I like the girl with the haircut. The, the I the that's haircut. exactly what I was good with. Oh, uh, she was like a, a video today on yeah. on Facebook where somebody put Hitler's voice to this uh, hog, uh, uh, David Hogg. You know where he's he's got the arm in the air and and all of those things uh, straight up in the air. Uh, so it, it it was a good uh, it, it worked. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, I I, I kind of like the girl with the short hair. And she yeah, was very she funny was, because she was being interviewed by somebody, and they said, why do you think that you are so popular with the people who are following this story? And she said, it's the short hair. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was, that's why I immediately fell in love with her, because she knew, hey, you know, people will remember me because I've got this hair that's been so cropped short. It's you know. the Sinead O'Connor. Uh, Sinead O'Connor, yeah. yeah. Or so Shinehead, whatever American. you like. Yeah. Did you see her speech at the um, yeah yeah at the walk? At Ma the amazing, amazing, amazing. Those are some bright kids. They are. You know that must be a very bright community because they're very bright kids. Especially for being in Florida. And watch out your foot on that. Thing. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, especially being in Florida. Yeah, but that community must be. I to yeah. begin with, I didn't see a lot of black kids in that school. Uh, it, it's got to be a wealthy white. It's affluent. Yeah. Area, very affluent, yeah. I think it's near Boca, like in that area. Let me there. ask you this. I, I know this story. Of course, it's 17 students. But if it had happened, say, at a major black like high in school. Detroit or, yeah. Yeah, or in Detroit or in Chicago, would it have gotten the same play that it got in this all-white community? There oh. aren't many black shooters uh, you know, it, when you look at the demographic of who's doing these school shootings, the, it fits the profile for that area and uh, those, you know, white kids because they're white shooters. They're uh, no father in the household. Usually they're using some sort of drugs like psychotropic drugs. Oh, here you go with your psychotropic drugs. You heard and, that one yeah. place, somebody giving that, that, that. Uh, well, you just don't like Scientologists. But, uh, yeah, well, oh, yeah, like Alex, Steve, I don't just not John like Paul Scientology. Stevens. I abhor Scientology. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they don't like, they don't like drugs and they don't like psychiatrists. Uh, uh, the, yeah, the yeah. And they also don't like anybody criticizing them. Yes, uh, Rob. To answer your question, though, about whether if it happened in a black community and the, and the students were, you know, black, I, I think I would like to think that it's the eloquence of the speakers, of the chill, of the kids. And if, it, it, you know, that it would ignite the same passion in people. I'd like to think that. Do you think, for instance, this kid Hogg, I look at him and he's really very articulate. In fact, uh, Marjorie said from the first day she saw him, he's going to be a politician he someday. He's, he is a politician. And he is a politician already yeah. now. Uh, and and uh, But I've kind of felt as I've watched him that he's kind of getting a little, uh, shall we say, enamored of the spotlight. Yeah. Is that yeah. the best way to put it? Full Do you feel, of himself? Well, it's not full of himself. But well, they're he, meeting famous people. They're meeting all these rock stars, you know, that, that performed at these events and being treated, you know, we're going, I'm sure they're flying first class. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. You know, that the, like Oprah and all these people that have backed them. Yeah. They're flying all over the country and they're seeing the world and, you know. Yeah, there it, were two of them here. You know, when I look at the in infrastructure in that, that was set up for the the marches, in not only in Washington, but all over the country, there was like these huge stages with large sound yeah, systems. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. I know from experience, this stuff costs money. Who is yep. picking up the tap for this? Uh, people, people, people like Oprah and, and Clooney. No, I don't think Soros was involved, Phil. I don't know. You pull his that's, name out that's of That's what they are saying. I said to my wife, we were sitting there watching it, and, and all these stars were coming on, and I said, this is bad. This yeah, is bad. Uh, that, the minute they did that, I kind of like went, eh, you know, I mean, come on. It taints it. I well, think I, I think that the adults in the room should have stayed out of the spotlight. Yep, exactly. You know, I agree. Uh, they sh they, there was no reason why they couldn't be there in the no. crowd supporting them and so on and so forth. But I, I think that it, <laughs> when it looked the most efficient was when it was just the kids, yeah, right. you know, totally speaking. Agree. And that they were the, they were the stars. And I got to give it to Clooney. I haven't seen Clooney anywhere, but he's, his money's in there, you know. Right. Oprah stayed pretty well out of the mix. 
But who was it was singing the other day that I saw? Well, you know, um, what's her name? The black singer. Uh, uh, the one who, from American Idol. Uh, one from American Idol. Uh, Jennifer, 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 uh, 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 Lawrence? No, Jennifer, okay. Jennifer Hudson. yeah, whatever, know, Hudson, Hudson, Hudson. Yeah. she, uh, she, she was there singing and I said, <laughs> I said, that was, that was terrible. I said, because really we shouldn't have those stars there. And then I thought about it for a second and her family got wiped out by guns. Yeah. You know, she was very much a victim of this sort of thing. So in a way I felt maybe she was appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Matthew McConaughey was in Austin, Texas. Oh, really? Was he driving yeah, he, at Lincoln? He was yeah. a hunter. <laughs> he he was a what? He's a hunter, so he was talking about, you know, he didn't want to take guns from hunters, but he wants responsible gun laws against automatic semi-automatic weapons. Well, I mean, I think that you know, anybody who I mean, I'm sure even Phil doesn't agree with selling automatic rifles to people. Do you, Phil? Oh, come on, Phil. Come on. Be, uh, be, be, give surprises. Some people that should be well-trained to handle it, but I think mental health uh, is more, in, uh, and, and tracking mental health is more important. I did, that's not the question I'm asking checking. you. Isn't, isn't it overkill, so to speak, to have an automatic rifle? It's not automatic. It, it's, 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 they're semi-automatic. They're no different than some hunting rifles. They just look ornery. You know? Uh, you know they just look ornery. Uh, Any yeah. gun looks ornery. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes, uh, Kevin, black, Kevin, black, Kevin, black. I think. Did yeah. you have your hand up, Kevin? No, I was just uh, uh, saying AR-15s for deer. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, I, I respectfully disagree. Uh, automatic weapons can shoot off massive amounts of rounds and a short spurt and uh there th there's really no business uh, for them and uh, law enforcement uh people all over the country will tell you the same thing that for for the, a layman to own a gun like that is is overkill mm -hmm. yeah there's well, no I need for it. well i've often said i've often said that they say that well you know uh, it's a sport and we uh, we should be allowed to do our sport well sport is when it's a sporting situation in which there's an there's equality topics. on both sides. Yeah. So I'm saying if you want to really do sporting, throw a bunch of antlers on your head and go amendment. after the deer on their own terms, okay? The Second Amendment wasn't set up for sport. It was set up to protect us from tyrannical governments. Uh -huh. It was set up to catch... So I want a nuclear weapon. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say, say, say it, uh, Bob. It was set up to catch slaves. Those were the militias back then, slave hunters. Uh, you think slave hunters? No, he knows. He up. knows slave hunters. He's right. Well, it's think of the it. time that it was created. Think of the time. Right. That written. John Paul it. Stevens. John Paul Stevens. What about John Paul Stevens? He's Just look at his argument. He spells it out. He tells us. It's from an antiquated era. Well, yeah, it was it was written for a certain place in time, and it no longer has relevance. Absolutely, you were when the military you were firing had muskets, M16s, having AR-15s in the hands of civilians, I think is only fair. No, I see. Well, you see, I think that we should just with a, with a rod. yeah, I th I think we should do uh, if we want to really solve this thing is that we. Uh, uh, do exactly what the law intended and go back to shooting muskets. We have to have a single round. Yes, I love your National Rifle Association patch. Put it on your car and watch how long your car doesn't get keyed. You know what happened? If you pay the payments uh, 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 every quarter, they yeah. don't give you the jacket. The whole 1500 up front, Cheap. then you get the jacket. All I got was the ID card. <laughs> Somebody's trying to call us right now. Hey, listen, I got to get out of here. It's Scott Boddicker, thank you. I don't know where he went. He's in the he's in the empty square. Uh, Phil, Phil Meyer, thank you so much this evening for joining us, and we're glad you're a, on the mend. Bob thank Eber, you. thank you. Thank you to uh, Kevin for once again joining us. Bree, good hearing from you from Dubai. Uh, we, uh, yeah. you can, it's better if you can let us see a picture only because that way we can know when you want to talk. Um, 
Yeah. Rob yeah. Alfano, thank you. Always, always. A, many, many yeah, things. Here tomorrow. What? What? You're not going to be here tomorrow? No, I'm going to get a, a, the crack of dawn and drive to family in New York. Okay. Well, uh, have a nice, oh, have a nice Easter. And we should say that. Jeff Stein, have a nice Passover. Tony, have a nice whatever you have out there in Queens. Just yeah. go by my sisters. Yeah, We're go to your sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the New York thing. Go to your sisters. Okay, everybody, I'll wave goodbye, and uh, we'll see you all except for uh, Rob uh, tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, uh, that's our uh, that's our citizens panel for this evening. A uh, nice, uh, happy bunch. Uh, we had a nice discussion going. Let me see here. Let me make sure that. Uh, oh yeah, I got to turn off all my stuff here on Skype. So the next show, which is uh, the uh, program called The Intersection with Jack and Amy can use the lines. And uh, also, uh, let's see here, at uh, 1 o'clock this morning, Eastern Daylight Time is Connections. Tomorrow night at 9.30, Damian Chaplin will be here with uh, the uh, exchange. The Intersection is next. Did I say the exchange? The Intersection. Yeah, The Intersection. Let's get it straight. Anyway, and, and I'll be here again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.